1959 Australian Swimming Championships at Hobart's Olympic Pool, and Ilsa Conrad's easily wins one of her two titles, beating America's champion Chris von Salsa center and Sandra Morgan at the right. The victory dais is a familiar spot to Ilsa these days, and watching her famous brother John streak away from his opposition is also nothing new. John wins every freestyle title at the meeting. The Conrad's kids, as they're affectionately known, and coach Don Talbot, are the main reasons for our world freestyle swimming supremacy. In the past, Japan and America were leaders in this field. Australia had few capable of world times. Perhaps best known was Boy Charlton. His achievements, considering the limited training methods of the day, will always be remembered. Clashes between Charlton and Noel Ryan drew enormous crowds. In Victoria in 1931, both swimmers broke five minutes for 440 yards, a feat comparable in its day to the breaking of the four-minute mile barrier in athletics. In women's swimming, the great Fanny Durack was the idol of the 20s, and Bonnie Meerling won a silver medal at the Berlin Olympics. In the 1938 Empire Games, Evelyn de Lacy won a gold medal, but in those days, they were few and far between for Australia. The years following the war saw great changes in training methods, patterned on those so successful overseas. The old idea that excessive training would burn out a swimmer were thrown aside, and it was a case of work and more work. The daily routine was a heavy session of calisthenics and then a four to five mile swim. First dividends from this new scheme were the performances of the late John Marshall, who rewrote the record book for distance swimming. Then a great batch of champions such as Murray Rose, a triple Olympic gold medalist. Sprinters Devitt, Henricks and Chapman. Henricks also holds two Olympic gold medals. Then two youngsters we've heard a lot of since these pictures were taken in 1957. Ilsa at 12 and John 14 were then showing their great potential to coach Talbot. Ilsa at that age had recorded the third fastest time ever by a woman for 440 yards. John was national junior champ for the 220 and 440. It was in the New South Wales Championships early in 1958 that Ilsa really hit the headlines. Nearest the camera, she's opposed to Dutch champion Kari Schimmel in the next lane and Olympic and world record holder Lorraine Krapp in the center. Lorraine, as expected, sets a hot pace. Down the last lap, Lorraine appears to have the race won, but Ilsa's powerful finish takes her to within a touch of the champion. Both break five minutes, a time that in Charlton's day was considered the ultimate, even for a man. At the same carnival, John started his now familiar habit of breaking records every time he swims. During the week of the championships, he set no less than six world records. Quite an achievement for a boy who 12 months before was not good enough to swim in Australia's Olympic team. A civic reception capped a week of triumphs when their home suburb of Bankstown turned out in force to acclaim their young idols. It was the first time in swimming history that two members of a family had held world times together. At this stage, eight between them. Then to Melbourne's famous Olympic pool for their first try at the Nationals. The women's 440 with defending champion Sandra Morgan, third from camera, then Ilsa, Lorraine Crapp and Dawn Fraser. Fraser leads into the last lap, but Ilsa begins her challenge. And she's gaining with every stroke on her more experienced rival. It's Fraser by a touch, but again Ilsa has broken the five minute barrier. The men's 220, and world sprint record holder Devitt takes an early lead with Chapman next to him and Conrad's on his far side. At the last turn, it's anyone's race. 
by the typical Conrad's finish puts the issue beyond any doubt. The big crowd sees the new champion win by two yards, and all are aware they'll hear much more of John Conrad. A few nights later, Ilsa collects her first national crown. Setting a pace that makes the 880 look more like a sprint, she leaves the field far behind. At the finish, she has a long wait for the rest of the field after breaking world records for 800 meters and 880 yards. When a possible second place getter arrives, it's only one of the field still two laps behind the tiny Ilsa. In much the same way, John spread eagles the mile field, winning by over 100 yards and smashing four world times in the one swim, 24 seconds off the 1,500 meters and over half a minute off the mile. At this stage, there's no doubt about their inclusion in the Empire Games team that goes to tropical Townsville for winter training. At the Taruk Memorial Pool, they spend six weeks with trainer Talbot, preparing for the hard grind ahead. Dawn Fraser, one of a star-studded team that's the biggest ever selected to represent Australia overseas. Talbot, an ex-school teacher, helps with school studies as well as preparations for the big events to come at Cardiff. Underwater films prove an ideal way to keep check on hand and leg movements as well as breathing techniques. Ilsa's form continues to improve and she shows swimming class way beyond her years. The underwater camera studies turning and Ilsa gets top marks from John who is also her greatest admirer. Finally, the big day arrives, and they're off to Wales. I'll be uh, competing in the 40 yards and the 60-50 yards freestyle, and also the 4 by 220 yards relay. And Dilsa. Well, I'm very thrilled to be representing Australia in the Empire Games, and well, I'll be doing my best and have to win a medal. Cardiff Arms Park, and the thrill of a lifetime as they parade with the Australian contingent about to start its biggest gold medal collection ever. Prince Philip declares the sixth Games open and one of the world's most important sports meetings is underway. The men's 440 yards with Conrad's third from the far side. It's his favorite distance, but there's not much between the big field going down the first lap. Scottish star Ian Black, next to John, stays with him in the early stages but towards the finish, the Australian champion draws away to win easily in game's record time. The Conrad's kid's first gold medal. John finally wins three, and Ilsa won. The presentation is an event John has looked forward to since watching with envy a similar ceremony at the Melbourne Olympics. Back home after the record-shattering tour, there comes the more serious business of catching up on school studies. End of year examinations call for a short retirement from the water. Proving he's a good all-rounder, John passes with flying colors and also becomes school captain. For Mrs. Conrad's, the task of cleaning trophies is one that grows bigger each week. It's a case of every cleanup in the pool making for another cleanup at home. And it's all because of a decision made in Europe after the war, when Mr. and Mrs. Conrad's decided to make a new home for their family in far-off Australia. Today, the two youngsters, who only eight years ago could not swim at all, hold 12 world's records between them. John is national title holder for every recognized freestyle distance, and even in slow motion, he's fast. Ilsa, 
until recently a distance champion only, is now challenging over short events and improves every time she swims. The way the Conrad's kids are heading, who knows just what is their real potential?